friends hello welcome back to amethyst craftworks i'm samantha these are my fingies and you guys know when all you see is my fingies and the tabletop something is going down and today indeed i have got a crochet vlog a project vlog for you where we are going to go through a project that i have been wanting to do for quite some time now and I wanted to get it done before the end of summer and we're cutting it pretty close here so <laughs> there's actually two two projects that I still have yet to complete for the summer that I wanted to complete before the summer and this is one of them we're gonna tackle one of them today and so hold on let me gather some supplies and we are gonna go over what we are doing here today all right now do you remember the aunt lydia's heavy rug yarn that it's now been several months since i hauled these these were a gift to me from a co-worker who had i'm gonna show you quite a lot of this yarn and when she found out that i crochet she you know asked if i wanted it and of course I said yes because look at how vintage this is like this is well this this is the reason why I picked this particular skein to show you but this label is so retro so vintage she said these yarns were from the 70s I'm taking her word for it I, it, I don't think she's wrong there and I've been wanting to make an actual rug with the rug yarn and so I've had some ideas percolating some processes that I have been trying to figure out and I think I'm now ready to commit to the project and so this is but one of many I don't even know if I can actually show you <laughs> I've got a big bag this is one of two two big paper bags of yarn these are all the warm colors spilling out here you can see there's an arrangement of some good some good old vintagey kind of colors here i love them and then i've also got a bag of cool colors which in all of my you know taking all of these out of the bags and looking at them and so on I realized the cool color bag doesn't include purple it includes blues and greens and like teal teal but no purple which was kind of disappointing and if I'd been able to find, like on eBay, for example, a skein, just one of this same yarn with this same kind of label in a purple, I might have bought it. But sadly, in my various perusings over the last few months, I was never able to find one. So even though purple is my favorite color, we are going to do without purple, and that's okay. I've also got my yarn bowl because that's going to come in handy here. My glorious, beautiful yarn bowl that was customized for me. I did have to remove <laughs> my movie marquee, post it, there was only one, so I removed it, as well as the cake of yarn and my little beanie booze that's sitting here because this is going to come in handy, as well as a pair of scissors, my little fancy pair of scissors and then these big boy jumbo crochet hooks I will just take them both out of the packaging now because I'm going to use I was thinking of using this big one which is 15.75 millimeters I don't I don't think you'll be able to see but maybe 15.75 millimeter this little one little it's <laughs> 11 and a half millimeters I have these two I thought of using this one and then I was like well maybe that's too big 
I don't think this one's big enough. So I think we'll use the the big the big bad boy. This is absolutely the biggest crochet hook that I own. We'll try it. We'll see how it goes. If it's too big, I may go down to this one. If the plastic hooks and where are your there it is. The make of the fiber is Codel, Codel, polyester. I don't know how well this is going to get along with a plastic hook. We'll find out. If not, I've got up to a 10 in both the resin hooks from Furls as well as like metal hooks. So I've got other hooks I can try that are a bit smaller. But anyway, beyond the hooks and the yarn bowl and the scissors, I'm going to ball up these yarns. I'm going to hold them double stranded and I think I'm going to take one warm color and one cool color like this. And I'm going to unfurl them out of these skeins and ball them together until they make a ball that will fit in my yarn bowl and then cut and repeat. I have no idea how many skeins, how many of these skeins it's going to take to make a rug that I also don't know where I want to put just yet. My kitchen, my bathroom, my front door, by my bed. I really don't know. So I'm just kind of going to go with my heart here, <laughs> right? I'm just going to kind of go until, until it's adequately big. And I'll show you that when we get there. But first, I'm just going to, I'm going to take this yarn label off. And I'm going to maybe untangle this one here first. Okay, there's an end. But it's tied in a knot. Ah. Okay. So, these are kind of like Hanks. Where it's one big loop that's tied maybe this is where my scissors come in handy cut that cut the knot off and then pull okay i'm essentially going to try to split this in half You'll see what I mean here in a minute, but I'm going to try to split this hank. Gosh, I don't even know what is the best way to do this. Maybe I should use my swift to ball this up. Maybe that's what we do. But I wanted to essentially have it so that like half of this and then the full of this, it, it's hard to explain, but I didn't want the colors to end together. I wanted to stagger them together so that when half of this color is done, I pull the next warm color and then it's warm color with the cool color for another half skein. And does that make sense? Maybe, maybe not. You'll see what I mean, but hold on here. I'm going to try to figure out the best way to do this without turning this yarn into an absolute tangled mess and then we will continue so hold on here okay <laughs> friends we are back i have some thoughts some updates some etc etc so number one i was saved here by a certain miss heather shout out to heather the crochet witch hey girl she sent me a Swift for my birthday, and I have not used it since she sent it to me. But this came in so handy because I was not expecting, I was very much not expecting these skeins of yarn to be like one big loop. I don't know what I thought these were, but they for sure surprised me. I thought it was maybe a regular skein of yarn that was just loose. You know, like a current Red Heart, for example, the way those skeins are wound. 
I thought it was like that, just loose. Nope, <laughs> it is not. So the Swift came in very handy. I will also say, since the last clip, I made dinner <laughs> for both me and Ralphie. Got myself a good old boo-boo here with my thumb. I was cutting lettuce, of all things, and I nicked my thumbnail, which also nicked my thumb, so I'll have to excuse the uh, botched <laughs> band-aid here. But speaking of my hands, one of, one of you lovelies mentioned in one of the videos that I talked about these yarns, saying make sure you keep lotion on hand because they will dry your hands out and uh yes ma'am you were correct <laughs> while i was balling these yarns up i had to go run and grab there's so little left in here but strawberry pound cake from bath and body works smells fabulous i will just say so my yarn now smells like strawberry pound cake which is not a bad thing but these yarns they like sucked every last bit of of moisture my hands have ever had within them in all 39 years of my life like i don't necessarily have dry skin on my hands but they felt like husks <laughs> of hands when I was done because I balled up four skeins of the Aunt Lydia's rug yarn just to start with. I don't know still how much yarn I'm going to need, so on and so forth. So I started with four so that I could show you here what it is I plan to do with them. I did try to video using my Swift, but since it attaches to the edge of my table, I like really struggled to figure out a good way to show it. And my yarn winder is the same. My yarn winder goes on the edge of my table. So I'm just gonna ball them by hand instead. That way I can show you. I can show you what I'm doing, right? Just in case you were curious, the colors that I picked here are beige, tangerine, we've got SP green, which I think is spring green, but this is like slime green. It's, it's a, a fabulous green. And then the blue is medium blue. And so these are the four colors that we are going to start with. And I'm going to show you a little bit better of a visual representation of how I'm going to ball these together. Hold on. Let me, let me show you what I meant here. Okay. So I'm going to start with these two colors because these, I just happened to pull them off the top of my bags. And these are going to be the first two colors that we are going to work with. So I'm going to use my handy dandy yarn bowl here. I'm going to pull it kind of off screen a little. I'm going to pull some yarn free. And I'm going to hold these double stranded. And when I get about halfway through the beige color, I'm going to cut it and attach the next warm color, which is going to be orange. And then I'm going to do the full orange, right? And then when the green ends, I'm going to tie this on and it should stagger them a bit, right? So all I'm going to be doing is winding these yarns double stranded into a ball. And I will show you when I get to it, how I'm going to attach these yarns together. Because it's also been an excuse, really, to practice what I think is called, is it the fisherman's knot? I know it as the magic knot. Oh, beige is rolling everywhere. Um, the magic knot for 
crocheters and knitters and, and fiber artists in general. That's how I know it. Because it's a way to attach two strands of yarn together without needing to weave in tails and whatnot. And so yeah, I'm just going to do about half of the beige here into this double-stranded ball and then and then I will come back and show you that. I'll show you what I mean. So hold on here. Okay. So I've got about half of the beige used here. I will say, man, even though I'm right-handed, having a band-aid on my left thumb, it makes things <laughs> so difficult. But we are we are persevering, right? It's it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to take the beige end here going to snip it there we go I'm gonna put the beige the remainder off to the side I'll come back to it perhaps we'll see but I'm now going to add in the orange the tangerine color and I will link you in the description down below to the video from Bella Coco that I used many many moons ago to learn how to do this and I'm gonna show you you know how I do it here which is not exactly perfect so watch her video right so we're gonna join the orange and the beige here and all I'm gonna do is essentially tie the orange really tight to the beige and then tie the beige to the orange and again really tight make these nice and tight and then pull the long ends of both the colors and bloop they just cinch right together you can pull on them. The yarn itself will break long before this knot does. And then you can snip these ends pretty close here to the knots. And there you go. These yarns are joined. There is minimal bumpiness and it is it is an art but you absolutely can hide this inside a stitch or on the back side if you have a dedicated back and front side. You can hide this on the back of your project. You don't have any extra tails to weave in and this is the way that I have um, joined yarn for a little while now. And so yeah, now with the orange maybe these will work better if I do it like that the orange will now take over as the next warm color along with the spring green and this totally was not an on-purpose color combo right it's not like pumpkin and a vine or anything right <laughs> it's not halloween inspired at all no for me are you crazy what are you talking about me like halloween colors <laughs> that's also one of the reasons why i'm so disappointed i didn't get an or uh, a purple or a black or a white or a gray or anything but that's okay so these jump out of here they don't both fit quite perfectly in there. So it is a bit of a struggle. And this is going to take a bit of prep work to not only ball these up from the skein, but also then ball them up together like this. But I'm going to take some time to do that. I think I'm going to do maybe, this is four colors. Maybe we'll do six or eight. Maybe we'll fit like one ball. I wanted it to fit in here but maybe I don't know maybe only six colors or so will fit in there we'll see but this is what I'm gonna work on here for a bit and then I will come back and start the actual project there's a bit of a bit of prep work here to do so one sec
Okay, so <laughs> I am sure that you saw the chaos that it is in trying to ball up two balls of yarn into one where they both don't fit in the yarn ball together. Oh my goodness, it's like a trial, <laughs> okay? But I think that's as much yarn as I can fit in here. And so I'm gonna snip this. I'm gonna snip the blue where it meets the orange. There we go. And that's gonna be the first cake, the first ball of yarn for my project. It will take some doing to prepare these here, but I'm gonna spend a little bit of time doing that, and then we will actually get started on the project. I keep saying that, but yes, that is the next step here. So let me prep some yarn, and I will get back to ya. frustrated here. I'm going to go over why in a sec, but the yarns that I'm using for the beginning part of this project, because I genuinely have no idea if I need more, less, I don't know. We'll find out, right? <laughs> but I've got them here. These two are the balls that you saw me make in the sped up fun footage. They are the second and third balls that I'm going to be using. This one is the one that we sort of made together that I had to re-ball because the color I wanted to start with was on the inside, <laughs> of course. And balling this yarn up is why I am very much frustrated 
it's really rough on my hands. It's really not super fantastic to use. We'll see how this goes. It definitely feels like rug grade <laughs> yarn. But we're going to push through. We're going to keep going. I did want to say this ball on the inside ends with light blue. And so this one starts with a light blue. And then it goes all the way through to yellow. And then this one starts with yellow. I needed to sort of brain the best way to organize these colors. So they, from the ease of my sanity, lined up as best as they could. I think they do now. I'm gonna move these off to the side. I can also show you, this is my stack of spent <laughs> labels. So in these balls, we've got beige, medium blue, tangerine, spring green, cerise, I think that's how you pronounce that. I'm still not 100%, but cerise. We've got Lieutenant Avocado. If you know, you know. <laughs> I've got yellow, navy, wood brown, and peacock. And so those are the colors that are spread throughout these balls of yarn that we are going to be using. And I am finally, finally, like two days into this project now, I am finally ready to get started. So I did do a little bit of a trial run here just to test crocheting with this yarn. And I will say, I have bounced back and forth between using these hooks, not using these hooks, using the 10 millimeter metal hooks, furls hooks, whatever that I've already got. I will say, in my testing, the 15.75, this is just too big. Not only is it too big for the yarn, but it's kind of too big for me to comfortably use. It started to give me a hand cramp like almost immediately. So. That one's a no. The 11.5 millimeter worked a bit better. It's a little bit easier to, to handle to work with. We'll see how long it takes for my hand to cramp with this one. But this is what we're gonna use. I will also say, I forgot to mention, you are going to need some stitch markers if you somehow are following along with me. I'm gonna be using Four. I'm going to pick the green ones, kind of arbitrarily, but there's four. They match my hook, right? So we're going for green, and I'm going to mark my increase stitches with these. Two on one side, two on the other, just so I can keep track of them. And otherwise, I think that's it. I think we are ready to go. I will start things off here with a good old slip knot. There we go. Put it on my plastic hook. And I'm gonna do half doubles, I'm pretty sure. And I'm just gonna work in a spiral and go, you know, until I can't go no mo, right? So one Oh boy. <laughs> Do three, four, five. The amount of chains you start with is really kind of arbitrary because you're you are going to be increasing and on each row it even increases. So I let's try maybe out of fifteen. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Mm, I don't know. Let's do 20, right? Sure. 
it doesn't, it really doesn't matter, I don't think. But one, two, three, four, five. So that's 20. And then I'm going to add two more. And then in this third chain from this hook, this green hook, we're going to do a half double. Now this yarn, it doesn't glide really in the way you think it's going to. I don't know if it's the hook, the yarn, the combination of the materials together, me. I'm not really sure. But maybe it'll come with time, with practice, making it easier. But this is my first stitch, so this is going to be the end of my increases on the corners here. I am going to count this two chains, these two chains that I skipped as a stitch. So when we come back around, I'm going to add one here. You'll see. You'll see what I mean. If you watched my pillow case, it was an actual tutorial, or my uh, summerween purse making, I use this base quite a bit for projects. So I've done this technique several times now. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crochet half doubles all the way down to the end. And then I will just, I will come back and show you that. So one sec here. Okay. So I'm down to this last chain. And in this chain, I'm gonna put three half doubles. And I'm gonna mark the first one here maybe. There we go. The first one. And then I'm going to mark the last one. Also, this yarn really wants to, like, do this. It, like, really wants to twist up on itself. Oh, it's a test of my patience, I tell you what. But I, I really want to do it, so we're just kind of making make and do. So there's do. Then we're kind of going to turn it a little bit so that the third one sort of starts us off on the other side of the chain. And I'm going to mark this last one. So now in subsequent rows, I know that these are my increase edges. These are my corners. But then once I get going, I can pretty much just crochet without thinking about it, without having to like count really, you know, anything like that. Because anything to make my life easier when the yarn and the hook, oh dear, uh -huh. As, as, is, <laughs> as is showing here, when the yarn and the hook and the whatever else just isn't the easiest to work with. And I was going to crochet over my tail here, but I'm, I'm not even going to worry about that. I'll sew it in at the end. It's fine. And so, yeah, I'm going to work along here back to the beginning and then I will I will meet you back so hold on here all right so I'm all the way back to the beginning and in this very last chain I'm gonna put one final half double and use my last green stitch marker to mark this and so now I know <clears throat> this is my increase start and stop and this is my increase start and stop on either side and I'm just gonna work in spirals I'm not gonna you know slip stitch and attach I'm just gonna go from here right into the top of that two chains that we skipped in the beginning and 
this is now as scrunched as that stitch got. That's going to be the beginning of my rounds. And so I'm going to take, well, you guys know me. Let's grab another stitch marker here. Purple. Put it in there. And so that's now the start of each round. And it's an increase. So I'm just going to put another half double. Oh man, it is a trial working with this yarn, I tell you what. Boy oh boy, okay. So they're there. I'm going to take this stitch marker out, put two half doubles. Oh, there's a <laughs> scrap. So I'm going to put two half doubles in this stitch. One, two, and uh, in theory, if I can get it, there we go. So in that second half double, I'm going to put the stitch marker back in. That way, when I come back around for round three, I know that that spot is where I end my increases. So my last increase goes in this marked stitch. First increase goes in this marked stitch. And you know what? I will say, as frustrated as you can probably tell that I am, I don't mind the way this is looking. Double stranded, I kind of love this, this mishmash of colors. I'm already starting to see the orange and the yellow peek through that's coming. I know it's going to look good. <laughs> However, my frustration also can't be denied here. So it's 50-50. It's I like it, but I hate it, you know? And that's, that's okay. Because this is 45-year-old yarn. I looked it up. And Aunt Lydia's rug yarn, heavy rug yarn, the kind that I've got here, this brand, this label, and this, where is it here? Where did it go? This fiber, this Codel, Codel polyester, this line came out in 1978 and the whole Aunt Lydia's rug yarn line was discontinued in 1979, if the source that I got this info from is correct. And so this is 45 year old yarn. It is older than I am, and so respect your elders, right? We have to, we have to kind of keep in mind that this is very old yarn. It is not the softest, it is quite rough, it is quite crunchy in bits, and so I have to practice restraint, right? I have to be a little more patient than I am showing currently. Sometimes I struggle with patience, especially with yarn that wants to fight me. So, I will come back to you when I've got a few more rounds of this on, maybe a color change in here. I will come back and show you when I have some progress, or I'll come back and tell you I went back in time and slapped Aunt Lydia. Either way, <laughs> either way, I will be back. Okay, you guys. So, we've had some changes here. I have some <laughs> thoughts and such. So, first of all, this is the second attempt here at this rug. It's the same stitch count. I just swapped hooks. That plastic hook, the 11.5 plastic hook, it just fought me the entire time. I think that was the issue because this worked up so much better. And so this is a, hopefully you can see, 10 millimeter hook. This is just one of the yarnest hooks, cheapo Amazon hooks that I've got, because I also thought if plastic was kind of fighting this yarn, that resin also would. 
metal seems to work fine. And so this is what we've got so far. I did have a color change and the knot ended up on the back of my stitch here. And so it, you know, it's the back of a rug. It's never going to be seen. <laughs> it's fine. I also decided to use one of my actual fun fancy stitch markers as my progress keeper here. I thought the broom was fitting, you know, for the floor. You sweep the floor. You got your rug. In my head it made sense. And now that I have done this much on here, I will say, I no longer want to go murder <laughs> Aunt Lydia. I don't hate this yarn as much as I thought I did. It's working up a lot better, a lot tighter, a lot smoother. It's not quite so rough on my hands, although it is rough on my hands, but trust I keep this handy no matter where I'm sitting and crocheting. And yeah, I'm now actually pretty excited to get going on this project. And so that's what I'm going to do. I will check in here periodically, show you my progress, tell you what's going on, go over any issues I end up having. But yeah, I made it to the orange, and so I'm just going to keep working here, and I will meet you back when I've got something to show you. And I think I am pretty much finished here. There is no way that I can show you this whole thing in frame. It is, it is quite large. And that's a good thing. It is a good thing. But I wanted to show you how I'm going to finish the end here. Because I've gotten all the way around... Pretty much one full round with the pe peacock, I think, and the wood brown color together. And I've only got this much left. And so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end it here. I'm not gonna do another ball of yarn. I'm not gonna oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna unwind another skein or two to do another round. I'm just gonna end it here because I'm Again, a little frustrated, but <laughs> that's okay. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to end it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Um, all I'm going to do is... I'm going to do one more half double. And then, since this is a spiral, I'm going to do one single crochet to, like, step it down. And then a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one pull it out and fasten off and then it sort of vaguely gives a graduated edge there to finish it off so it it doesn't kind of stop abruptly right but yeah we are now done this is the back side I've got this tail here the starting tail and then I've got the rest of this teal and brown here to weave in but that's the end and while I do that I'm gonna give you I'm gonna talk to you about my final thoughts I'm gonna grab my yarn needle and my scissors again and uh yeah we are gonna chat so 
final thoughts. <laughs> this yarn, pros, right? Pros first. This yarn is gorgeous. The colors are beautiful. Like I said, I'm pretty sure if this is from 1978 or 1979, which is when 78 is when the yarn got the Codel, Codel polyester fiber. And then 1979 is when it was discontinued, right? So it is 45 to 40, you know, 44 to 45 years old. And these colors are still so vibrant and beautiful that I'm really impressed with that part. I also think this is going to be <laughs> a rug for the ages. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. It doesn't feel like it's going to unravel. It feels like this is going to last me another 45 years, right? <laughs> and that's also a good thing. However, working with this yarn, my hands have taken a beating. You can kind of see I've got like a couple of, of I don't know if it's like rug burn or what. I had some on the back of my hand. The cut that I had on my thumb from when I was making dinner also got like rubbed a little extra raw than it might have otherwise. Like this yarn is rough. It is rough. It is not soft. It is, I would never in a million years make any kind of garment, anything like that. I think this yarn is very much suited for rugs because this feels like an outdoor rug like a front porch doorstep doormat kind of you know feel and that's fine because you know I could do that with this for sure I still haven't quite figured out where I'm going to put this what I'm gonna do with it I might try washing it first to just give it the best chance I can but it it is very rough on the hands my hands for sure took a beating while working with this yarn and that's what I expected but no amount of <laughs> strawberry pound cake lotion helped my hands really to survive <laughs> the yarn it was a pain in the tuchus to work with. Does that mean I hate it, though? Not necessarily. I am frustrated with it, for sure. But I don't hate it. I don't hate the outcome. I love this outcome. I love the, the way this rug turned out. Would I make another one? Yeah, I think I would. Will I do it in the year 2023? Probably not. <laughs> I will very likely give my hands a good rest from <laughs> this yarn because it's, it's rough. It's rough on your hands, I will say that. But it looks gorgeous. I mean, it's hard to see all the colors, like all the stripes together. You can also take out all my stitch markers. It looks, it looks fabulous, I will say. The color combos, striping it this way, where it was like two colors together and then cut one halfway, another one in, another one in halfway, so on and so forth, made a really cool kind of color striping effect. I like it held double. I like the way the stitches look. The stitch definition is, is fabulous. But yeah, I think I'm a little bit sick of this, <laughs> of this yarn. I don't necessarily want to <laughs> murder Aunt Lydia, but I do want to maybe have a few words with her, <laughs> right? Because it's not, it's not great on the hands. But you know what? It's probably not meant to be. I think it's called rug yarn for a reason to make a rug with. And so yeah, I am now completed. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to show you 
this whole thing. Let's see. Mm, that's as high as my camera arm goes. So maybe we'll pull. I'll pull the edge up so you can at least see the teal there on the end. And yeah, I am. I am done with this. When I figure out what to do with it, where I figure out where I'm going to put it, I will show you a picture, I will show you a video, so on and so forth. But for now, I just want to be done with it. And so I am. <laughs> and so thank you so much for joining me here on this crafty vlog, crochet vlog, crocheting with 45-year-old yarn. <laughs> it's been a real trip. It's taken me a lot longer than I thought it would. But I appreciate you joining me. I appreciate you leaving me a like and a subscribe and a comment and all that good stuff. And until I've got another something for you, I will just let you go. Take care. Goodbye.